is limited inventory, meaning that there's only a limited number of ad spots. Like that's not infinite. The reality is this, the brands that just leverage what is working for them right now or the Facebook momentum trend that they got for two months, that's literally why people uh, or brands are not able to establish themselves and actually grow. You have to look at the big picture. And usually what I found is the higher your AOV, the lower the conversion rate. Right. As a Welcome to, I guess this is our second um, podcast, yep. right? Hosted by, we can say, Brandlux Media and Hayes. Hayes. And nothing today I think is going to be a super interesting topic because I'm not sure if, you, if you've heard around, but everybody is having a hard time and struggling on meta. There's like a glitch. Ads are not profitable. People cannot scale, right? So in this episode, we're going to talk about why that is the case and what you should do and focus on to actually get your ads back up and running profitably. So just to give some context to the, the viewers, like what's happening, man? Like what's happening with, uh, with Facebook? Yeah. So, I mean, if you've seen, maybe you see it yourself, if you're spending, you know, a decent amount on meta inconsistencies in performance or just bad performance every single day, you just, no matter what you do, you just can't get it to work. Or maybe you've seen it from other people, but maybe it's not so bad for you. And there's a few different reasons going around as to why the meta performance, you know, even for like this year, Q1 and the start of Q2, 2024, has been bad. Some people are saying it's, you know, meta is making a lot of updates to their platform and it's causing a lot of glitches. Um, some people are saying that it's Timu, right? If you heard of Timu, they're the Chinese competitor of Amazon. They're spending ridiculous amounts on meta. They're launching so, like 8,000 campaigns a day, you told me. Yeah, so with that and knowing that there's limited inventory, meaning that there's only a limited number of ad spots, like that's not infinite. So it's supply and demand, right? And exactly. as you see in Q4, when more people come on the platform and the supply diminishes, then the costs go up. Yeah, right? yeah. So before it's always <laughs> almost yeah. double more expensive, right? So it's kind of what we're seeing. Uh, some brands are seeing it more than others. Like some brands or CPMs are like amazing, and some other yeah. ones are just like higher than normal. And then there's other factors. You know, there's if you're in the U.S., there's a lot of money going into political campaigns because obviously it's election year. So there's a lot of like warm up. I would say every market on. is different. Like literally, yeah. we have some clients that are promoting in Europe completely fine, nothing is yeah. going on. And then in the US, it's more expensive and it, it's kind of a harder thing think, to manage. I think the US has been hit the most because yeah, we're also seeing in Australia that it's not really an issue. So I think be, especially because Timu are breaking into the US and they're going heavy there, I think the US is facing the issues probably more than anyone else, at least, you know, Europe, Australia, like yeah. the, those regions. So. Yeah, in this episode, I kind of want to touch on like meta performance, right? You can't like whether it's Timu, whether it's political, whether it's meta making updates, you can't influence that. So Timu, no Timu, uh, whether meta decides to make an update and it goes well or it goes wrong, you can't really up like you, you can't influence that. But what you can do is you can position and do things that well, maybe you'll find a breakthrough in performance. And look, the reality is this, the brands that just leverage what is working for them right now or the Facebook momentum trend that they got for two months, that's, that's literally why people uh, or brands are not able to establish themselves and actually grow and scale, right? They're out of business after one or two years, yeah. right? And it's because they're, they're, they're actually not building a brand economics, right? Things that actually make sense. So in this episode, I want to talk about how can we just say, you know, Facebook, I don't care about you. I care about building something that is actually sustainable for the long term. So that even if you increase my costs by 72% in the next year, I'm still going to be profitable. I'm still going to kill it. I'm still going to be the entire competition in the market. Right. Because at the end of the day, as we also said in, in the first podcast that we did, the brands that win are the brands that are able to sustain the highest cost per acquisitions and still be extremely profitable. 
yeah. because of their infrastructure, uh, the infrastructure that they've built so far, right? Exactly, yeah. You're spot on. And you don't want to you don't want to just be a company that sells products, right? You want to be a brand and you you want to start to build that. And past episode as well, we spoke about communities and how that can also help build the brand and this asset that you have that you can use for that revenue. So I guess where do you want to start? Do you want to start on like business economics? I think it's really important to start there and make sure that that is good in the first place. Yeah. Or if it's not good now to fix it before we get into like offer structures and how you can test different things, uh, you know, today. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about business economics. So let me ask you a question. How do you, how do you feel like brands should approach this? Like, and by the way, if you don't understand what we mean by business economics, we mean well, it's very simple. When people hop on your website, they need to spend enough and convert enough. It's essentially the proportion between what they're spending and at, at what rate they're converting and their lifetime value, right? Yeah. So let me ask you a question, Jordan. Like, what do you think is the first thing people should focus on to increase business economics basically as fast as possible? Or like, what is your view on, on just like, what is the first step that you should take? Yeah, I mean, I would focus on margin, like product margin, especially if you're running paid ads, right? Because if, if your margins aren't good enough on the product, then it's, it's very, very difficult to acquire customers profitably, especially as your ad costs are rising. Now you could argue the fact that yeah, our margins aren't good on the front end, but we have a really good retention and LTV model. And if that's the case and that's proven and you can acquire customers at break even, but you have a, you know, three month, like a, a really good like payback period where you can recover that in profit, then fine. And, and that's actually probably a good thing because you, you can acquire customers better than your competition because they probably don't have that subscription yep. model or yep. that retention model. But for most businesses, they don't, right? So I think you really need to focus on that first order of profitability. So when you're acquiring a customer, are you profitable in that first purchase? And in order to do that, you need a good margin. Yeah. Now, that is very much dependent on the product that you're selling and your, your suppliers and where you're based in the world. Maybe you can provide some more. Yeah, uh, so that is, that. that is a challenge. Honestly, all the, just transparently speaking, like most of the clients that we're able to scale have at least 50% margin, like at least. Because nowadays it's, it's hard to get like a, a 4X ROAS at $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 in spend, right? Like that's, I think if you're even getting that, it means that you're not, you're not spending enough, yeah. right? So I think you should, you, you should always optimize for margin. I'm, I'm not sure why, but a lot of um, business owners or brand owners are like, yeah, I mean, I found the supplier, it's fine, I got 40% margin. And they think that's enough. But if you're running D to C, like if you're maybe just doing retail, even if you're doing retail, it's still, they're, they're gonna take a huge, you're gonna take a huge hit when it comes to margins. So at least 50% uh, percent most, and the clients that actually have lower than 50% have the subscription model. Yeah. So we have a client that sells a, like a 40, $50 product. Our cost per acquisition is 50, $60. They're completely fine, but their customers on average stay, stick for something around like uh, 10 to 11 months or even up to a year. So yeah. they have amazing LTV, yeah. right? So it, it's really also a matter uh, of that from that perspective. Yeah. And I said that that can actually turn into a competitive advantage if you do have that model, that back end, right? I think, you know, Obvi, the supplement company, you have that community of like Facebook, that Facebook group of like 80,000 people they have such a strong retention model that they could like, they're in the supplement space as well. Like Huge. probably one of the most difficult ones in terms yeah. of customer acquisition, yeah. selling collagen, protein, like they they've found a way to get good LTV retention and their customers, both through subscription models, but launching other products and having this community that they can spend more than their competitors on acquiring customers from Meta. So really, really important to think about but then I would say the next thing is, if you have a good product margin, is looking at the AOV to conversion rate kind of look the, the let, balance. Let's talk right? about that. I, I did a YouTube video in my channel um, and <laughs> I was speaking about how to increase average or value, how to increase conversion rate. And I went through a case study of a recent client that has a 0.33% conversion rate, 
but has a $600 average order value. Yeah. And people were lit, not roasting me, but telling me about, oh, it's only 30, 0.33%, 0.4%. Yeah. But that's, that's actually just half of the equation, yeah. right? The important thing is that if you multiply the average order value and the conversion rate, I, from my experience, if the number equals $200 or more, your economics are great and you're like really ready to run paid ads. So if you have a $200 AOV and like a 1% conversion rate, you're doing good, which yeah. is the same reason why my $600 AOV client that has a zero point th something like 0.35% conversion rate is absolutely killing it. Yeah. Right. So it's understanding that not getting discouraged if you're getting, you know, a 1% or a, a 0.5%, but it's also understanding that it's the proportion between the two that actually matters. Multiply that by the LTV, which is how many pe uh, times people stick. So if I have to also just kind of like uh, give you an idea on what I think the best product is to promote on, on Facebook or Meta, is also like a, re uh, a, a repeatable, um, like a repeat purchase product, yeah. where if it's not a subscription, it's like a, a consumable, like a, a consumption t type of product. I think those are uh, the absolute best. Yeah. Um, that solve an important problem, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's really like you're spot on when you say that you, you can't just look at AOV or conversion rate alone. An AOV being average order value, how much someone is going to spend on average when they purchase from you. And you have to look at the big picture. And usually what I found is the higher your AOV, the lower the conversion rate, right? As a general rule. So yeah. if you have a lower conversion, uh, sorry, lower AOV, more than like, it depends on the market as well, right? Like we have some clients that have like a $50, $60 AOV, but have a 6% conversion rate, but it depends on the market, depends on the product. Yeah. In the health supplement space, yeah, you can have a maybe a $100 AOV, but you're gonna probably have a 1.5 conversion rate. Or lower, yeah. Yeah, it depends on the product, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so really important to look at the balance. And then, yeah, don't be discouraged if you have a 0.5% conversion rate, but your AOV is $800. Yeah. So think of the big picture and still try and increase your conversion rate. There's still ways to improve that. But yeah. yeah, I think that's really important. One really important thing that I noticed that really worked well are that actually increase conversion rate, but this is more like of a long-term approach and increase average order value is doing more like informational based ads. And so doing like advertorial types of ads or listicles. Yeah. What happens is two things. Number one, you're not hard selling, you're providing value and information, right? And if you're providing value and information, people actually appreciate that you're doing that other than just selling a product. And they, they end up consuming the entire page, the entire listicle, and it's great. The second benefit is that you have an extra retargeting pool, right? Instead of going from ad to landing page, right? You can go from ad to not, so sorry, from instead of going from ad to product page, you can go from ad to listicle to then the, the product page. So there's yeah. an extra layer of retargeting. And guess what? If those people convert and you retarget those people into the listicle page, you can send them to another listicle page and, and another yeah. listicle page. So it ends up being like this information or value-based approach, yeah. right? And people just are gonna see you as the authority in the niche. But as I said, this is more of a long-term approach. So don't don't expect like launching an, an advertorial and getting a 4X, like it's not the approach. Yep. It's more of like a retargeting approach that's gonna benefit you for more of the long-term. It's really interesting. And actually uh, the, the latest video I posted on my YouTube channel goes through a case study of, we took a client from zero to 873K a month in revenue. And one of the, like our ad strategy was sending people to a listicle. Uh, that's one of the funnels that worked, right? We sent people to the PDP, we sent people to, you know, other pages. But one of the, like the, the landing pages that crossed for us was the listicle. Um, so, yeah. So give us the uh, secret sauce, um, Jordan, because people <laughs> want to hear this. How is, how is this strategy with the listicle exactly? So we, we found that, uh, here's the caveat. Listicles worked for some of our brands and for some other brands they just didn't. And other landing page styles did. So w when does it work? So I think you need to get the, the angle right. You need to have, like, your headline is the hook. You think of ad creatives, right? The first three seconds being the hook. It's the same on the landing page. You need to re-hook the audience, right? Give them a reason to stay. 
And that's where the headline is, right? You want to be speaking to your target audience and the problem that they have that's going to interest them to read more. And what we found is that something like a very short five reasons why landing page. So five reasons why mothers across the USA are turning to this product to X, Y, Z, right? So the five reasons as well are very like quick and easy to read. There's a visual and there's not a lot of text, right? It's a very simple landing page, white background, not a lot going on, no distractions. And then we found after like, after the listicle, you can do two things. You can send them to a product page with an offer and you can create a, a curiosity gap to say, look, this, this brand is currently running this offer for Mother's Day and stock is running low, check if it's still available. And the button is like check availability, right? So they have to like check and see if it's still available. So it creates a curiosity gap. That, that works well. We've also found that a quiz works well, right? So if you go- Is it, uh, so from listicle to quiz? So we've done listicle to PDP, which works. Yeah. You can also do listicle to quiz and that works as well. So the quiz would basically like, people love taking quizzes. So it's an right? extra retargeting um, angle, I guess, because you're going from ad to listicle to quiz, and then it's gonna redirect them to the right product, I imagine, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, or in the case of this, like we redirected them to the same product every time, but it was just a case of like getting that engagement. There's another like, I guess, invisible hand that we believe is the reason why some landing pages work well is because if you get a good session duration on your landing page, it sends a really good signal to Meta, right? Yeah. Because if someone is clicking and having a good experience with you, and a good experience, one measure of that is session duration, how long someone is actually spending in terms of time on your landing page. Meta is saying, oh, like these guys are giving you know our audience a good experience, so we're gonna give you a lower CPM. So quick thing. Now everybody's gonna say, is gonna test the landing page, is gonna, uh, sorry, the listicle or yep. the advertorial, and then it's not gonna work for them, yep. right? And then they're gonna say, the listicle doesn't work, right? If you're shit at marketing, anything doesn't work, right? So I'm not saying you are shit at marketing, I'm just saying in general. Yeah. So how do we become good at actually creating offers and, and talking about a specific uh, topic, right? In a way that actually persuades people and incentivizes them to actually click and learn more? Because yeah. I think that is the secret when it comes to beating the competition and, and saying, you know what, fuck meta, I can do this, I can be profitable. Yeah. It's marketing, I think, in my opinion, in my humble experience, if you are good at marketing, you can beat any, anything in the world, right? There's no such thing as expensive CPA if you're good at marketing, right? So yeah. what do you think about that? And how was essentially, how did that come into play into your case study? So one thing I'll say about landing pages as well is that the congruency between ad and landing page is really important. The reason why someone is clicking on your ad, there's a reason there, right? you're touching on their, a problem they're facing, you're speaking to a certain desire that they have, and they wanna learn more. If your landing page doesn't talk about that, then you're gonna, you're gonna have a, a miss, like, it's gonna be a misalignment, right? So it's really important, I think, before you start testing landing pages, to find the angles that are working for you in terms of your creative, in terms of your offer, and then you can like use landing pages to throw gas on the fire, right? So, yeah. That's first, first and foremost. You mentioned as well, like good at marketing. Like I think a lot of this comes down to not just relying on ads as well. Like for this case study, ads were the main driver. We had Meta and Google as the main, main focus, but we also used other means of uh, marketing, affiliate marketing, SEO, newsletter marketing, which isn't like Klaviyo, it's more like there's newsletters out there that have big audiences and you can pay to place ads in their newsletters. Yeah, it right? can be very profitable. I had a client that um, scaled a supplement brand. This is, a, it's for health companies, yeah. um, very competitive industries. And so it's just a great uh, asset. I have this case study of a brand that went from zero to like 80K a month in like three or four months, just by using a newsletter and yeah. spotting essentially the ad into these newsletters. Yeah, an example of one of those is Morning Brew. Um, these, sometimes some of these newsletters can be really expensive because 
of maybe the quality of the audience and the size of the audience, but I would look around at newsletters like Morning Brew, see if you can get like an entry level. But one caveat here as well, like sometimes these newsletters, maybe the ROI is not going to be amazing. Um, it's not going to be like a three X ROI, but as long as you have good business economics and you're looking at it as acquiring new customers and, you know, yeah. being able to make profit on those customers either today or in like a, a pretty good pay payback period, then it could be a pretty good channel to, to yeah. have. But one thing is that how do you, how are you able to be good in marketing in the first place? Like that is the question. Like, how do I learn? I think the most important thing is doing three researches, a product research, knowing everything there is to know about your product, the benefits, the solution, a market research. How do I actually get those benefits and address them to the German market or the Hispanic market in the US or the Australian market? Every market reacts in a different way, right? So product, market, and then awareness. What, how do I study the level of awareness that people have of a specific market, right, of my product? Like what, yeah. what is the awareness level? Because when it comes to listicle, whether it's a listicle, whether it's a landing page, there's different marketing angles that you can approach um, yeah. with, right? You can have a solution marketing angle, uh, um, a marketing angle that is more geared towards uh, solving the problem instead of talking about the solution, right? So there's multiple different awareness levels. Yeah. And so I think that is the key. Um, and I, I think that a lot of people don't make it because they don't test. Um, and I speak about this in my other YouTube videos a lot but it's because it's crucial. They don't test 50 marketing angles and they give up after one, right? And they're not able to get to the next level where, you know, the customer acquisition eventually decreases because of that, right? What do you think of that? Yeah, I, I think it's super, super interesting. Like if you haven't already, read Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. This is where the five stages of, of awareness come from. It also talks about yep. market sophistication, and consumer psychology is one of the best books on advertising ever written. It's an old book. You can probably find like a PDF online. Yeah. But I think a lot of it comes down to really understanding your customer. You know, you have a product that's solving a pain point or providing a desire, fulfilling a desire. That's what it comes down to, right? You need to understand that inside out. You need to have a very clear avatar because once you know who you're talking to, as you said, the marketing becomes a little bit easier. Because now it's just like, okay, we understand who you are. We understand what your problems are, what you've tried that hasn't worked, what your frustrations are with our competitors, what um, desires you have as a human being that you want to be fulfilled. And then now it's just a case of reverse engineering and saying, here are the angles that we're going to test. The angle being the overarching theme of your marketing message. And then you're testing them to see what, what hits. Right? Exactly. And one thing that really works well, and not many people are doing this, is getting a concept that works very well in the US, right? Yeah. And getting that same concept and finding your own pool in a less, in a less like a lot less saturated market, right? Yeah. So it could be promoting to like a different country or different people within that same country, like yeah. ethnicities, right? Ethnicity groups. So you can literally find your own gold mine. And people just don't think about these things, but it's not just US and Canada or just white people in the US. Like there's also like very targeted uh, groups. I'll give you an example. We consulted a client. And by the way, we're talking about all these things to, these are all ways to decrease your cost per acquisition. Yeah, right? as a reminder, Meta is having glitches. <laughs> 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 and uh, I mean, yeah, we're, we're talking about all these things because even if you want to still spend on Meta, which I would completely recommend, I'm, Big meta Bro, fan. 60% of the ad spend is still going to meta. Yeah, and you should spend there because your audience is very likely there unless you're selling some crazy product and or you're not allowed to advertise on meta. Yeah. But all these things, even if you advertise on meta, are ways that you like test different things, like test the landing pages, offers. I, we can get it a bit of creative, but also being better at marketing is going to help you with your meta cost per acquisition, right? Yeah, being so, good at marketing can help you increase your economics because you yeah. can sell a higher AOV, you can increase conversion rate with good copy, with good offer structure. And then if you can combine that with good creative, then that's like the best of the best of the best. That's where, when you yeah. can spend 
thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and still be profitable, right? So uh, I wanted to tell you, we have a quick case study of a, a client that we consulted that is yeah. selling skincare, or sorry, hair care, for just, uh, they were selling hair care for black women that were also Christian. That was a gold mine. That she was getting like five x return on, yeah. an, and this was like last year, so it wasn't like ten years ago, right? And so this is a perfect example of getting a very saturated niche, getting into a very saturated niche like uh, hair care, and just finding your own market. Yeah. Christian people that are you know black Christian people in the U.S. Super specific, but you know there's still a very big market, like millions of people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And another thing that's very related is like the red ocean to blue ocean strategy. I think that is, you could say that's part of, that fits under that category. Uh, and what it means is you're taking something that it works in a red ocean. So if it works in a, a red ocean being a very extremely competitive, highly saturated market, and you're taking it to a blue ocean, which is like, it's less competitive, less saturated, and there's a lot of opportunity, then you're gonna crush it, right? Very likely. So one thing that we're going to start testing for our clients is um, VSLs for e-com brands. Yeah. And it's nothing new, right? Like brand, a lot of brands do it. A lot of the highly di direct response, a lot of health supplement brands do this. They run ads to a VSL, yeah, yeah. a video sales letter, which is more common in info products. And everyone does it in info products, but you don't see that happening a lot in e-commerce. So in other types of products. Yeah. So. It's something I want to test because, you know, if, if we're like a first mover with our client in a specific niche to do VSLs, it could work out pretty well. So again, like it, it all, like even us, it all comes down to testing. Yeah. Right? And the only way you make, you make a VSL work if you're good at marketing and copywriting. Yeah. <laughs> so it all comes back to that. But also I wanted to add, like, there's always way, like, even if you're saying like skincare, like super saturated in the U S yeah. you can still segment your marketing in very personalized pools. So you can still promote to the white, um, you know, New York, New Yorkers or whatever the from California, whatever you can still like do very personalized marketing in a super saturated industry. So personalization, what does it do? It increases um, the how do I how do I explain Perceived the level of achievement. resonation? Yeah, if that's even a word. <laughs> yeah. And so if there's a higher uh, intent, there's higher CTR, there's lower CPA, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So that perceived likelihood of, of achieving it, right? Because you're speaking directly to that audience. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I see an ad of uh, an Italian guy, myself, <laughs> <laughs> chances are I'm going to click on the ad. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, uh, it's about that. Uh, one other topic that we should talk about is like, okay, but how we can talk about creative later because that's essential for yeah. um, decreasing your cost per acquisition. But I receive a bunch of questions in my community, Ecom Premium, about how, how do I actually create an offer in the first place? How am I yeah. able to differentiate my offer in the marketplace? Like, so if, if that's my question to you, like how, how would you tell people on how to start with that? So when people hear the word offer, they immediately think, 20% off, 30% off, I need to give like a percentage off. That's, that's a promotion, at least in my mind. An offer, the offer is like, what are you giving them in return for their money, right? And when I think of the offer, I think of the components. So first of all, what are they getting? Like, what is the product? What are the extras, right? Are there any like bonuses, free gifts? And also how is the product packaged, right? Because you can have the same exact product but if you package it in a different way, it's a different offer and it appeals to a different audience segment. So like you were saying, the same hair care brand, like it, it doesn't mean it, it only works for black Christian women, right? That's just their <laughs> yeah. target, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it works for like 10 other, you know, yeah, yeah, how yeah, many yeah. other segments, right? Yeah. Um, but if you just package it in a way that is specific to the, the problems and the desires of that audience segment, that's the offer. And, you know, just going into like Hermosi's $100 million offer structure, where on the top you have increasing the perceived likelihood of achievement. Um, I forget the other one at the top, but the bottom is like decreasing the, the time that it takes to, to 
get the outcome, the outcome, and yeah. also reducing the effort and sacrifice. Yeah. So, so if you can yeah. find an offer that does that, it, it's definitely a lot better than just selling a singular product. Yeah. And also speaking about packaged solutions, it's way easier to sell somebody on a solution than a product, right? So yeah. if you can create some sort of bundle or offer, right? that promotes a specific solution. I'll give you an example. Morning skincare kit for XYZ, right? And you can maybe yep. even be, like we've tested, we've split tested uh, changing names on the products and that alone just increases conversion rate if you do it yep. in, in an accurate way. So try also selling the solution or the problem instead of just saying here is you know, a skincare product, which yep. if you are in a competitive industry, it's pretty much impossible to, to find a profitable way of promoting just a skincare product alone. Yeah. What do you think of that? No, I, I agree with you. I think another thing that people don't do enough is price testing. And I mean, price testing is, is very, very simple. You, you have a price that say you're selling for a hundred dollars. And so quick, quick backstory. Um, we, we did price testing with this client as well that we scaled to 873 K a month and beyond. And when you change the price, you also need to be looking at different variables. You need to be looking at your AOV because your AOV is going to change. Yep. It's either going to go up or down depending on the price change. And the conversion rate is also going to change. Likely lower price, higher conversion rate. Yep. So what you want to do is you find the sweet spot between the, the price alone that allows you to have an AOV where you can acquire customers at your desired cost per acquisition and then the conversion rate which goes hand in hand with the AOV, like we spoke about earlier. Yeah. So recently, there's this A-B testing tool that we use for our clients on Shopify called Intelligence. It's kind of like a replacement for Google Optimize, but it, it works really well because it, it's a Shopify app. It's is, it just for split, is it for split testing landing pages or split testing just offers or? So it does a lot of things. The main thing is like A-B testing on the website, right? So you basically, you can have 50-50% traffic redirecting URLs. You can test theme versus theme. So it's like Shoplift? Yeah, but... Better. Better. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Shoplift. Uh, we're an intelligence partner. Moment, so. um, but the other thing that I found out is you can do price testing. And the founders of Intelligence actually come from the ride-sharing background, Uber, Lyft, where the price test, the price model is like super complex, it's based on demand, it's yeah, based on all yeah. these different things. But they're like experts of price testing. So they were telling me all these things and I was like soaking it up. Basically, what they said is to start with, you can do like a 10% up, 10% down, right? So if you're selling for $100, you could try $110 and $90, right? So you go like either sides. Yeah. And then basically you find, you know, if the 100, let's say the $90 works better, then maybe you can then go there and try like 95 versus 85, right? So there's also this like bell curve of pricing. And if you picture a bell curve and on one side you have like price and the other side you have like the revenue that you can squeeze out, you ideally want to be at the top of the bell curve, right? Which is your optimal price point and the optimal revenue. Yeah. So basically you, you want to also kind of draw this out and say, okay, Here's where we think we are in terms of the bell curve. And as you test different prices, then you can start to put those on the bell curve and say, okay, we tested $90. It's a lower price, but we're getting higher revenue. Where does that put us? Right? So yeah, I'm how, rambling and, 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 and how this, do you, how do you figure it out? You just multiply the two, the higher yeah. the number. So the higher the AOV and the, the conversion rate multiplication is and the better. That's yep. essentially the easiest way to understand that. Yeah. And when you're testing, you, sh you should also be looking at your revenue per visitor uh, or revenue per session, right? It's a good metric to understand. Yeah. Per visitor, per user or per session, yeah. how much revenue we're generating. So yeah, that's um, price testing and the structure there. Anything Let's else see. on offer optimization, like how to build an offer? Like we spoke about the idea of like selling the solution, right? But yeah. let's maybe be a little more practical. Yeah. Like how do we do it? Do we have tiers? Like how do we structure it? How do we promote it? How do we, you know, push it for ads? Very, very dependent on the product and yeah. the audience. But I mean, components of an offer for me are being able to, to speak to that audience, 
like, I, I mean, you have to look at the product you're selling as well. Like sometimes for brands that we worked with, we found just a standalone product without any other bells and whistles works. Other times you have to add like a free gift or a free bonus to make the perceived value higher. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to hear your, uh, your approach. Yeah, I have like three, um, I have a model that I always like to test. Every single product is different. Every single also market reacts in a different way. So I would, I test like a, a tiered offer where you have one, one pack, two pack, three pack, and you can like, it could be skincare, it could yeah. be like a, a plushie, it could be whatever you want, right? So the first one typically doesn't have any discount. It's just the product, right? And also like, we don't wanna be in, in a kind of like a super sketchy drop shipping uh, um, environment where it's like 50% off all the time. We want to actually make sure that people land into a safe, trusted place, right? So, it, you know, sure you can do maybe an April uh, restock sale or whatever, but it doesn't make sense if you, if you wanna build a brand to run that throughout the entire year, right? So the first tier, one pack doesn't have any offer. The second tier typically has um, a small discount for first time buyers. And you specifically state that it's for first time buyers. And what I will also do is like, I would put this into a landing page so that your current customers cannot see it, right? Because your current customers are not first time buyers, right? So first tier, no discount. Second tier, um, let's say 20% off plus free shipping. People love free stuff. Third tier, you can test a three pack. And by the way, I'm saying one, two or three, but it could be one, three, six. Yeah. Or if you understand that your AOV is 40 bucks and two quantities of the product is 40 bucks, maybe you should put that as an initial, right? So the minimum, yeah. you, you know that on average people spend 40 bucks. So maybe just put that as the initial tier so that it just only goes up. If yeah. You know, some my point. Yeah. So the third tier is that you can do like a three pack, six, 12, whatever it is plus the, um, a 30% discount, whatever you can do for first time buyers, plus free shipping, plus a free uh, additional product. Yeah. But that free product needs to be the golden product that people, you know, people actually want. So yeah. look at your inventory, look at what's going on. And if you see that this product has like, you know, an amazing repurchase rate or whatever, and it has good margin for you and doesn't cost you a lot, then that's maybe a perfect add on yeah. that will push people to. That offer structure, like, I think it's the, the buy more, save more, or the quantity break. Like it's called different things, but that offer works extremely well for consumable products. Yeah. We, we have a client, we found an offer that works super, super well is that three options. The first one, you buy one, you don't get any savings. The second one, you buy and you can, you can save. Yeah. But then the third, you buy, save, and you get a free product. And the free product is a smaller size of a bestseller and yeah, like for one of the offers we're testing right now, we're getting like a $15 CPA on a $56 AOV. Uh, yep. New customer acquisition is crazy. Yeah, uh, and also for like these types of products, you can you can also just test selling the bundle, but you sell the bundle in, in, in three different sets. One that is a one month supply, no discount, three month supply, six month supply, up to one year supply. Yeah, Trust me, if people are sold on what your, your uh, you know, if your landing page is, if your offer is on point, um, if you're copywriting and your marketing is on point, people will buy one year supply yeah. without even knowing. Like you, you might not think that is possible, but it actually is. And a quick uh, extra tip, bonus tip on top of this, is that if, you're, if you have an offer like this, or even if you don't have an offer like this, and you know that people usually add this product or this, like maybe it's option two to cart, and you know the value of that, you should have like a, you, you can also do like a progress bar in, in the cart yes, where you, you do it so that they're only like five, $6 away from getting either free shipping or an additional gift or something else. And you have upsells in the cart that are like low value, but if they add one of them to cart, it brings them over the threshold. Yeah. So it's like an easy way to add like another six, seven, $8 to AOV, which My makes God. a big, big difference. Yeah. Also another quick add on, which you can automatically check, just make sure it's extremely visible right next to the checkout lifetime warranty. Like yeah. You shipping can, protection or lifetime shipping warranty. protection, yeah. lifetime warranty. Just make sure it's very clear for yeah. them to see. Uh, and you can have like an uncheck. It's like checked already. So an extra $7 for the, it's depending on the ticket, right? Price. If it's a yeah. $300 product, maybe you can, you can say like 15 bucks, 20 bucks, right? If it's a $30 product, maybe like four or five bucks, but all these things kind of add up together. 
and the progress bar, whether it's for free shipping or maybe for that extra free product, it is going to make a difference. Yeah. And it's going to just push people to buy more and spend more. Wow. We're giving the source away today. Yeah, bro. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Well, like this conversion rate stuff, like really, like I'm really interested in, and intrigued in, in this because it, it's also like consumer psychology, right? Like as humans, we're wired the same way. So you can reverse engineer it with your offer structure, with the way that you can increase AOV, conversion rate, like it's super, super interesting. We can go deeper on this as well in like another episode. Yeah, I just want to add one more thing. If you don't know how to, uh, this kind of like to go backwards a little bit, if you don't know what to say and how to position your marketing, go on TikTok, look for viral videos because chances are what you're promoting is either already viral, already popular, like something, you know, something popped up. It's, uh, it's unlikely that you're just selling it for the first time. Go there, look at the most viral uh, video that has millions of views, read all the comments, read and study exactly why people are interested, what yeah. types of questions they ask. And that is that could be good for your ad copy. It could be good for your landing page. It could be good for your the title of your advertorial. These are all golden nuggets. Also, study what Amazon is doing. They're doing yeah. billions of dollars yeah. every quarter, right? So look at exactly, and it's like very cliche to say, but all these like smart uh, conversion rate optimization uh, tactics that we're yeah. talking about is literally what Amazon does. Amazon might not be the, the, the beautiful website, but it has all of these crazy conversion mechanism. Yeah. It's very easy to check out. It's very easy to add on other products. Like the experience is like, it's amazing. Yeah, they play a lot on urgency and scarcity. You think yes. of the, the offer equation, right? Like they, they work a lot on the bottom, right? Homozi says, get the bottom to zero. So that's getting them, like solving the problem fast, same day shipping. Same <laughs> like, day shipping. Like get you it can in two up, hours. Upsell, you can have them pay yeah. for that. So no, next to 20 bucks if you want it sh by tomorrow. Yeah, like we have a client that does like rush shipping. So it's like free standard shipping. And this is very common, right? Free standard shipping, but you pay X amount for Express. But you can have like another tier. That's Express. Like, <laughs> you know, prime. But like, hey, even if it's really expensive for you, just charge, even if you charge them what they are paying you, Maybe it increases uh, conversion rate or, you know, checkout to, yeah. to a purchase rate even more and it's still a win for you, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, study Amazon because they're, I mean, not everyone can get like same day shipping, right? It depends on the product, depends on where you are in the world. And yeah, depending on, on what you're charging for it, it could be, it's very difficult to give that away for free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but other things are like urgency and scarcity. Again, like... Some brands don't want to do this because they're very brand protective, but other ones are happy to do, you know, some urgency and scarcity plays. Yeah. I think we covered it for this one. Yeah. I think we're giving away too much sauce at the moment. No, nah, no, it's never too much for, for, for the fellow followers and subscribers. But um, yeah, I think we're, we're done here. Yeah. Let us know in the comments uh, what other topics you want us to discuss. We're looking, the plan here is to maybe do, the one, no, do a new podcast once a week. Yeah, no uh, promises. But no promises, but that's what we'll we're trying to do here in Dubai. <laughs> um, and nothing. If you have you have something else to add? Yeah. Um, I mean, we both have YouTube channels. We both have school communities. So feel free to check us out. Uh, Brando Manetti on YouTube. Yep. Um, if you're watching this on my channel, obviously, um, you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan um, Hayes. Yeah. So our school communities are in the links below. Basically... It's a way for e-com owners and people who want to get into e-com to learn about all these things in more detail. Of course, on these podcast episodes, we can only get, do so much. And it's very like, I was trying to show you a bell curve, you know, like <laughs> you guys are probably like, what is this guy doing? But you know, in like in the school community, we share a screen, give away resources. We go in depth and, and exactly. plus there's also other people um, like, like yourself that are dealing with the, um, the same issues. You can ask questions, yeah, etc. Answer, answer question. Either way, yeah. we're going to do these podcasts. Let us know in the comments yeah. what um, other ideas for topics that, and, you know, the goal for us in these podcasts is to make sure that we provide as much value as possible, give you all the answers here for free. That's the whole point of, of YouTube. But nothing. With no further ado, See yep. you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.